Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Enforcer and the Dude Tech Talk. Now we've had a few comments come in asking us about what's the deal with heel and toeing and also left and right foot braking. Now it's not a fancy dance move, I'll give you the strong tip because I'm a lousy dancer, but what it is, is a technique used in everyday driving with left and right foot braking, but also in race terms in heel and towing when you're changing down gears as well. So I'm gonna take you through it in layman's terms as we do here on Enforce From The Dude. Now firstly, let's just jump over into this uh, Commodore road car. Now this is obviously an automatic and Nowadays, and I'm finding this out with teaching my daughter how to drive, who's just going for her L's, that uh, a lot of new drivers only learn in an automatic. I mean, it's even hard to buy a manual nowadays unless it's a 4x4 or, or a truck. Um, now, in my day, it was all reverse. It was all about manuals. So you had your third pedal, which is obviously your clutch. And when you learn how to drive with a manual, you tend to always use your right foot for braking because your left foot is obviously changing gears. Uh, but again, with an automatic, nowadays when they're learning how to drive, uh, it amazes me that a lot of drivers are actually using their left foot to brake. Um, I, I'm not a subscriber to it. I think no matter whether it's automatic or manual, you should use your right foot. Now, the reasons behind this is that you've got a most cars, or just about all cars, have a, a foot rest right here on your left hand side near the, near the tunnel. Now to me, I always keep my foot there and use it as a balancing point. And this is a bit of a racing thing as well. So I've always got some sort of stability in my body and then I just use a right foot to brake and accelerate. But I've got that left leg steadying my body. So if I'm going through a corner in particularly and braking or accelerating, I can use this left leg just to stabilize my body and be more comfortable. If you're using your left leg to brake, well, all of a sudden you lose that stability. You go through a corner and you tend to move in the seat as well. Your seat belt's obviously there for protection in an accident, but it still doesn't hold you in as far as going through a corner. So to me, having that left leg propped up onto the footrest, just keeps your body nice and steady. So I'm an advocate for just right foot braking, whether to be obviously manual, but also automatic as well. But a lot do left foot brake, uh, advantages and disadvantages. I think there's more advantages than right foot braking in everyday road use. Right, that's in an everyday road car. Let's go to the race car and show you the techniques and also advantages and disadvantages of left and right foot braking in a race car situation. Okay, right, now here we are in one of the Norwell Super School cars. Um, obviously we're back to a manual, still have a, a foot rest there for your balance as we were talking about before. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around, we're gonna do a few laps and I'll show you the techniques of this heeling and towing we were talking about and the advantages and disadvantages of in a race situation, left and right foot braking. So let's fire up and get going. I'm going to explain to you how heel and toe works. Now, what heel and toe does is build the engine revs up on the down change so you don't lock the rear wheels coming into the corner. So here I am coming into a left hander. I want to come down to second gear. On the brakes, give it a rev. Down to second, then accelerate through the corner. Now, what that does is when you come into a corner, if you don't heel and toe under heavy braking, what that tends to do is lock the rear wheels, what they call a compression lock, and there's more chance of the rear skidding out. So that's why heel and toe is so important, is getting the engine revs up so the engine doesn't lock the rear end and you get into a skid coming into the corner. So we'll do that again. So we're coming out of this fast left-hand sweeper on the gas. Now we want to heel and toe back to third gear on the brakes. Give it a rev, off the brakes, turn in. What you're trying to do is not upset the car, not upset the car in balance. And that's the trick to it. In getting that gear change done nice and early in a straight line. 
So on the brakes, give it a rev down and then off. So that way you won't lock the back brakes up and less chance of the car skidding as you're turning into the corner. Okay, so that's changing down while you're right foot braking. Now there is a couple of left foot brakers that race, especially in supercars. Now the advantages and disadvantages, I believe in left foot braking, I reckon it's a good stabiliser tool. So if you're going faster a corner, you can just use the brake, say for instance, there's a sweeper that's just an, an iffy flat out. You know, you, you almost want to take your foot off the accelerator. Say for instance, this right hand sweeper coming up here at Norwell, if you're accelerating up to the corner and it's all and almost flat, you can just breathe on the brake still while you're on the gas and it just slows a little bit of car speed down without you having to take your foot off the accelerator and upsetting the balance of the car. So that's one of the advantages. The tricky thing is when the left foot breaker is actually changing down the gears. Now, um, because you're not using the clutch. When you look for brake, you're not using the clutch to actually relieve the gearbox to change down. So what a left foot breaker does is when they come into a corner, they brake, gives the throttle a blip, and then changes down the gear. But to get the sequence right is a real art form. So for the left foot breakers that change down gears, they do a hell of a good job because it's very difficult. So again, if you're a left foot breaker, you're not using the clutch to change down the gear. So you brake with the left foot, give the accelerator a quick flick, and change back down the gear. Very, very difficult to do. Uh, I could, I used to struggle with it a bit, but definitely when I raced a H pattern, I didn't do it. Let's talk about the advantages in that sort of situation. To me, it's a bit like a go-kart. When you brake with a left foot, you brake a lot smoother. Uh, I find you got better control when your left foot brake coming into a corner. Right, so when you're coming in, you can, you got a nice amount of brake, and then you accelerate through. To me, a left foot breaker has a lot better braking pressure going through, where sometimes when you right foot brake, you go there and then you grab some throttle. When you grab the throttle and do that twist, sometimes your brake pressure is going up and down. If you look at a brake trace on a telemetry, it's really up and down, where a left foot breaker is very smooth. So I think there's some advantages in left foot braking in a race situation. Now, the disadvantages and where a lot of engineers hate the left foot breaker is that, especially in endurance races, they tend to use more fuel. And why is that? Okay, I'm about to show you. As you come in into a corner, you start to brake, and you've got a little bit of gas on. Every time you see a brake trace of a left foot breaker, when they're coming into a corner, is they start to brake and then off the throttle. So there's always a bit of an overlap. They've always got a little bit of throttle on when the brake's starting to ramp up. What that does is it strains, puts a little bit more load on the engine, which then uses more fuel. And engineers don't like that. Engineers don't like that overlap between accelerator and brake. Uh, because what that does, use more fuel, and in endurance race, if you use more fuel, you've got to make more pit stops. So, left foot braking, bad in endurance races. Uh, right foot braking's a lot better. Uh, what, what's my preference? I tell you what, I reckon, I reckon it's horses for courses. Some circuits, I reckon left foot braking is an advantage. Places like Phillip Island, really fast circuits, flowing circuits where you can use a little bit of brake and the throttle at the same time, I reckon an advantage. For slower circuits, like Winton and some of the tighter stuff, I reckon right foot braking. So uh, if you can do both, and I tell you what, my uh, co-pilot and enforcer in the dude, Paul Morris, he was one of the best at it. He can actually do both in the same race. Like in a race, he can left foot brake and change to right foot braking, or do both within the lap. 
And if he can do that, I'll tell you what, there's a definite advantage in it, no doubt about it. But not many people can do it, it's either one or the other. But a majority of race drivers, right foot brake. And again, remember what I was saying about stabilising yourself, you can keep your left foot planted on that hill rest. And it just gives you a bit of stability as well when you're running around these fast Australian circuits as well. So there's fours and against both. So the choice is yours, give both a go and see what suits your driving style. Hey, well, I hope that's shown you the techniques of heeling and towing, and also the advantages and disadvantages of left and right foot braking as well. Now, the next episode, episode six of Enforcer and the Dude is coming at you on the 12th of July. Do not miss this show. We've got two, yes, two very special guests coming on the show, and we're gonna find out some stuff you guys haven't known but want to know as well. So it's going to be very, very cool. So don't miss that episode, 12th of July, Enforcer and the Dude, episode six. Thanks for tuning in.